Welcome back into the Ben Hogan Award. I'm Brian Estridge, and we get to visit a little while with two very special people. In fact, uh, a repeat winner, if you will, as uh, Ty Stravacci from uh, Georgia Tech is with us right now, and he's the Ben Hogan Golfer of the Month. If you remember the name, that's because you're right. This is the second time that he's won that award. Ty, good to see your face, man. Hey, nice seeing your face. Um, it's good to be on this uh, talk show, and I'm glad for it. Well, congratulations, too, by the way, on being selected as the Golfer of the Month for the second time. Give us some perspective. I, I know you've racked up awards during your short tenure and things of that nature, but when you hear that, hey, you're the Golfer of the Month in college golf, what does that mean to you? Oh, it's, it's cool. Um, again, it's kind of just validation that you're, you've been doing the right things. And I mean, obviously winning the Ben Hogan awards kind of, it's kind of been on your mind the whole time you're at college and it's cool to be mentioned for player of the month. Ty, you think about what has happened in your short career already, the U S amateur championship, that's got to rank right up there, obviously at the top, but it's been a pretty good summer for you as well. I know winning that North and South, just like your grandfather had to mean a little something, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, every tournament that I played in the summer has um, a deep place in my heart, especially starting the summer off after so much uncertainty for three or four months. And you go into north-south where it's always been kind of a close term with your family and you, you finish the week and you win and emotions there are insane. And then you tee it right up at the Palmetto the week after that. Um, and that place was awesome. Just great course. I thought it was one of my favorite courses all summer. And then, but the USAM going to Bannon's just went in there, being around my family and my coaches um, and all the history and all the accolades that come with it are pretty cool. Ty, you had the opportunity with all that's going on in the world to, to come back to Georgia Tech uh, because of COVID. Give us some sense of that decision, what that was like, how you weighed it against others. I mean, how, how do you come to that verdict? So that verdict kind of just again you kind of finish four years and you were always thinking that you weren't coming back and you get that extra year and it's always good to be around the, your friends on the team that you love and care about um and it's just fun i'm just looking forward to kind of what the future holds of this team and everything about it georgia tech coach bruce hepler's with us as well and i, I think that speaks to your program coach that the tie was, you know, he could have gone pro, could have could have taken it to the tour, but said, you know what, I'm coming back another year at Georgia Tech. That that had to make you feel really good. Well, it does make you feel like you're doing one or two things correct. That's that's for certain. Um, no, uh, we we have really focused here um, over the years. Obviously, it's an individual sport, and it's very difficult to have a team feel when you know you or I could be going together out to the golf course today in a qualifier, and it's either you or you or me that gets to go to the airport and I'm your roommate, you know, that, that's a tough situation. And so we have tried though real hard to, to uh, create a team thing to where guys care about each other. And, and uh, in an individual sport, you know, there is some, I don't know where you do your selfishness, but you know, you've got, you got to look out for yourself. Uh, so you get to play and we've tried real hard. And I think over the years, you know, we've had guys stay um, obviously Matt Kutcher had a chance to leave. We've had many others. Uh, Ollie Snyder jam was ranked number one in the world and came back for a senior year. So I, I, maybe it's a bit of a, a culture or, a, or feeling like, you know, I, I want to be around. We have great facilities um, to use. And I think part of, you know, with Ty and other seniors challenges are when they did away with the Corn Ferry Q school for this fall, that really, you know, in some ways didn't give everybody, you know, there are chances, but I think that was, that's forced a lot of guys back to college, but Ty has been a team guy since he got here um, has really focused on both sides of the equation with the, with the golf and the schoolwork was a, you know, a finalist for the Nelson Award, again, a great name, uh, you know, this spring. So uh, he has a, a really good relationship with some of the younger guys, which I think, again, is the draw to come back to where if it'd been kind of seniors leaving and stuff. But so he, so he's kind of shared himself with everybody. And I, I know there were some young guys besides his head coach, he was, it was pretty fired up when he decided to come back. Well, well Bruce, you mentioned Matt Kuchar, and, and there's a guy who won the U.S. Amateur as well. You've coached three of them in your career, a couple of them there at, uh, at Georgia Tech. And I know guys are all different. But is there a common theme that runs through those who are successful at that high level? Oh, I think so. I think you cre it creates a relationship. It it's funny. Uh, I was part of a national championship team at Oklahoma State in 1995. Uh, still proud to have taken down Eldrick Tiger Woods and Stanford in that situation. But, you know, the, a relationship that I still have with Alan Bratton, who coaches at Oklahoma State, I, I think they're when you do things together or when you're part of a group that achieves special things, I, I do think there's a bit of a club. I think uh, – 
Ty's had several chances to visit with uh, with Matt. And I know Andy Ogletree's up at the U.S. Open this week uh, and played on Sunday with Matt. So, yeah, I, I think there's uh, – it's like you join a club and, and they can't ever take your membership card away from you. Give us some sense of Ty's summer and where it stacks up and what excites you about him right now. What was interesting, he stopped through uh, right before he headed to the north-south and he, he made a comment, and maybe I'll embarrass him here. He said, you know, coach, it's time to start winning tournaments. And uh, goodness gracious, you know, look what happened. And so uh, it's, it's as good a summer as anyone's ever had. Uh, and it just shows you if you just keep doing the right things, uh, and you, obviously the belief has to come. But uh, it certainly is as good a summer as anyone's ever had here. And, and Ty, I guess when you look back on it, you look at your family and history. I mean, you had to play golf, didn't you? You didn't have any other options. Yeah, absolutely no other choice. Uh, no, but uh, – I kind of, both my parents kind of wanted me, if I wanted to play golf, they didn't push it on me. Um, we always kind of went out to the course on the weekends, but they always wanted me to play other sports, um, basketball, football, baseball, all that stuff. But when I kind of wanted to do it, they just went full bore supportive on it. Um, but they never really pushed me into it. Coach was um, talking about winning tournaments. Well, you won that North and South amateur in July. Your grandfather won it as well. Did you, were you thinking about that at all going into it? Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, I had a great mindset the whole week, but when you kind of come down the stretch and you realize kind of the history at stake and you kind of hit that shot into the 17th hole, you really start thinking about it. Um, but it's always something that I've always wanted to do to bring myself closer to, to him. Cause I've only thing I've heard are stories about him, and what a great player he was and a father and stuff like that. So so always stuff like that just helps me bring myself closer to my father and my grandfather. Coach Hepler, now uh, you, you see uh, Ty's uh, last year was on that watch list for the Ben Hogan Award here now, two-time golfer of the month uh, from the Ben Hogan Award. You know Ben Hogan and his history, his reputation, his success. Do you try to pass on some of what we know about Ben Hogan's game and his approach to the game? Do you try to pass that on to your guys at all ever? Well, I, I think, you know, you try to do that with all of the greats, obviously. And, you know, what you know is that he was relentless. Um, take no prisoners. Um, wonderful gentleman. But when, when we put the ball on the ground, then it's, you know, I've got one job and that's, that's, to, that's to beat your butt, you know. And so um, I think that's the thing that they all have to, it's a great attribute to have is how, how do you kind of turn that on and off? Um, and so, um, you know, you, you focus on the greats and, and what they've done and you, and you just try to move in those directions, certainly. And Ty, for you, when you think about it, I mean, it, it, have you learned about Ben Hogan? Have you thought about him, talked about him? Have, have you tried to study up on him knowing, hey, you know, there's an opportunity for me to be one of the finalists for this Ben Hogan award. I need to know all I can. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, my, my family and my dad mostly are just golf history nuts. Um, so just kind of growing up, my, uh, my grandfather, again, knew Ben Hogan pretty well, and he he went over to the house for dinner a couple times and my, my father was kind of involved in that as a kid and saw that and kind of got to know him a little bit. Um, but just knowing that kind of knowing the person he was, um, knowing his work ethic, that's kind of what you hear just fine in the dirt. The amount of times my dad says that every single week, um, it's pretty, pretty substantial, but just kind of knowing that history and kind of that family tie and it just makes everything so much sweeter to, um, hopefully be in consideration next year. All right, guys, let's get back to some normalcy when it comes to golf, to college golf this uh, year. I'm glad you're coming back, Ty. Uh, it's great to see your face. Uh, Bruce, you got a great one there. I know you're super proud of them. I know you guys are excited about the season, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. Can't wait to get started. All right, Bruce and Ty, thanks for joining us here today. Congratulations, Ty. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us.